Welcome back, Indiana Sports Beat Radio here on this Tuesday, August 15th. Mike Nizlik with us from the Boston, Boston, <laughs> Bloomington Herald Times. Uh, how are you, sir? I'm good, Jim. How are you doing? Good. Sorry about uh, holding on there a little long. We went a little long with chronic, uh, running my mouth too long. I apologize. Uh, you've been able to get out to practice. Uh, I've not been able to see it live, get out there after they kick us out. So I've missed most, most of that. And uh, in the break, I asked, I'll ask you again, what have you seen in the, in the race for the quarterback between Taven Jackson and Brendan Sorsby? I know it, I, I've said that there's been a quarterback race almost every year that Tom Allen's been here, but most of those were facades, uh, just, uh, gamesmanship. This one's not, it's legit. I, I truly believe they do not know who is going to start. They might, they might think they know, which is a lot of times has led them to doing things, but they don't know who is going to start right now, and no, neither do we. Yeah, and they're still splitting reps evenly um, as of yes, you know, from what we saw even uh, yesterday, where the the you know Brendan and um, Tavian, Tavian, Tavian were splitting with the ones and the twos. So I mean, it's still going on. Um, you know, as I was saying to you, I, I think it's pretty even in terms of where they're at talent wise. Um, uh, you know, I think, uh, Swordsby might be a little better, uh, thrower in the pocket. Um, but I think Tavon is probably better, you know, a little more athletic and with what they want to do, um, with some of the other parts of the run game, um, some of the quarterback reads, um, you know, I, I think that might give him an advantage. And I think there's also something to be said. He's a homegrown kid in terms of not, you know, he didn't come to Indiana first, but he's from the area. Goes to a major high school here. His brother's history here. Um, you know, there's a, a lot bit, of reasons. Why, a little bit of history. <laughs> a little bit of history. There's a lot of reasons why, if you know, the, you know, the tie goes to the runner, the tie goes to Jackson. You know, I, I think that, um, it, you know, his ceiling's probably a little higher. Um, you know, and he's a transfer, and so you want to. I think for Indiana to succeed, sort of going forward, the transfer portal is going to be kind of not kind of is really important. Um, and if you could show, like, look, you have a legitimate chance to start here to re, you know, rejuvenate your career. I think a lot of guys are gonna are gonna see that, and I think that's important. And so I think if it's close, there's a lot of reasons to go with Jackson over Sorsby. I, I think it's tough in terms of like, you know, your first game is Ohio State, so that's gonna be like if he looks really bad because I mean that's a really tough matchup. It kind of stinks for whoever gets it, but it's I think you gotta kinda... to, it's gonna be easy to look bad in that game. Right, and I, so I think you have to kind of overlook that and kind of look to, you know, I think the Louisville game will be the first true test of whoever does win the job, and so I think um, that's kind of how I see it. Uh, Sean says, with a team that has traditionally struggled with safety uh, with the safety for a pocket quarterback, Taven just makes more sense. We've seen Soresby in the past. Uh, they all need hope. Speaking of that, the offensive line is they've shown they they showed great improvement last year. So more improvement expected this year with better protection and more importantly, the opportunity to have a run game they had none of last year at all. I mean, they could not run across the street uh, <laughs> last year, but and they had good backs. Luckily, they have good backs again with guys like Josh Henderson and. Uh, uh, all American Jalen Lucas, but they've added guys as well. Christian Turner, uh, from Wake Forest, uh, the Johnson guys. So th they have the talent there. As long as the holes are open, um, they, they, they should be able to do something they have not done in the last couple of years run the ball. Well, yeah, and I think the d distribution of carries is another sort of interesting subplot to how they're going to get this all done. Um, you know, uh, with Jalen Lucas, I think you want to get him a steady amount of carries. Um, you know, you saw that at the end of last season. I think you want him you – know, they've talked about a minimum touch count. That's going to include uh, the special teams. That's going to include uh, receiving. But I, I think there's something to be said for getting him 10 to 12 carries a game. And so then how do you distribute the rest of them is, you know – uh, you mentioned Josh Henderson and Christian Turner, um, guys that have done a little bit. You know, Christian obviously had success, uh, was, you know, kind of the primary backup at Wake the last couple of years. Um, you know, getting, you know, you need a spark from those guys too. And so knowing that they're not going to be, you know, they're going to, you know, mix Jalen Lucas in, who can succeed, you know, in that role. So a lot of interesting questions on the offense. You know, I think uh, Walt Belk said, uh, described it as he has a lot of Swiss Army knives. 
um, in terms of trying to use all his different weapons. Um, and so it'll be interesting to see how all that fits together. I think Lucas is obviously kind of the key piece just because I think you want to get the ball in his hands as many times as possible in the game. Oh, absolutely. And he will be returning the ball. He's going to have a lot of opportunities, but that's also going to have a lot of opportunities for injury. So hopefully uh, he can stay healthy. And that protection is a big part of that. And that goes back to the quarterback, too, as well as uh, protecting that. Indiana is going to have to have a, a, a complete offense. Last year, they just all they could do was throw the ball, couldn't run it uh, until um, um Oh, my gosh. Dexter Williams uh, came in. All of a sudden, the fortunes changed. The Rod Carey took over offensive line, and they had a little glimmer of hope. He gets hurt, is not expected back uh, until midseason, although uh, it's he's ahead of schedule. So, And if he comes back, does he add another wrinkle to the deal? Uh, it's possible. I mean, just because, uh, you know, it, we'll see how the schedule unfolds. And you, you got two redshirt freshmen. Um, there could be bumps in the road at quarterback. So um, I, I think you leave open the possibility. And with some of the stuff they want to do, running the ball, I mean, you can give him a package or two, regardless of if you don't, you know, not not giving him pr the primary amount of snaps. Um, so I wouldn't necessarily rule him out, but it is tough. I mean, he's had a, a really hard road back from – uh, you know, now two ACL tears. So, I mean, that's, that's, that is tough. So it's going to take him some time. I know he's ahead of schedule on this one, but, um, you know, I think we'll see. I think they'll leave the door open for, for getting him in the lineup just because of how athletic and how dangerous he was with the ball in his hands.